It's mid-July near the town of Southampton on Long Island, New York. This group is on an expedition. We're here to collect specimens for the aquarium for Atlantis Marine World. And uh, to be honest, part of why we're out here is just one of the perks of our job, being allowed to be out here and spend an afternoon on the beach instead of uh, back dealing with the crowds at the aquarium. <laughs> Todd Gardner is a biologist at the Atlantis Marine World Aquarium in Riverhead. This is one of the best spots for tropical fish on Long Island. And if you look straight out from where they're seining, straight across the bay, that's the inlet to the ocean. So water comes in through that inlet and basically gets shot back into this back side of the bay. And, and all of these tropical strays are coming from the ocean. They're coming up on the Gulf Stream from anywhere from uh, off the coast of North Carolina all the way down into the Caribbean coral reefs. Um, the fish spawn and uh, their eggs and larvae are pelagic drifters on the ocean. That's how they spread into new areas. But so many of them get caught up in this northward flowing current, the Gulf Stream, that they, they just get taken up into cold northern waters and die. Atlantis Marine World and other aquariums along the northeast have been collecting certain tropical fish in these waters for decades. But according to scientists and collectors, the fish are becoming more numerous and appear to be surviving further north. While the reasons for this are unknown, some point to climate change as the reason. Either way, it's been a boon for collectors. Our two basic techniques are to pull this seine net through the grass beds in the shallows. And our other technique is to go snorkeling or diving around some of these hard structures, like the, the jetties and the, and the docks and bulkheads. This is another species of butterfly fish, probably the second most common around here. It's called the four-eyed butterfly fish false eye on the back side of it. In fact, when they're juveniles, they have two of them. They're called ocelli, meant to uh, confuse a predator. The seine net is a non-selective collecting technique. We pretty much catch everything that falls between the two ends of the net. And uh, so we need to be careful when we pull the net up, we leave it in the water and we try to get anything that we're not keeping back into the water right away and anything that we want right into the buckets. Oh, here, we got a rudder fish. Yeah? yeah? Maybe that's the one that ran away. This could be the one that got away. A lot of people confuse these with a pilot fish because they act that similar. They like to follow a large object or hang around a, uh, a piling or something. Here's a neat one. This is called a striped burfish. This is one of those species that we always considered a tropical, and you definitely see them down on the reefs and grass beds in Florida and the Caribbean. But um, there's some evidence now that the striped burfish actually migrates in and out of our area and uses it as a nursery. We better get them in the water. Atlantis Marine World collected about 2,500 fish from 25 different species last year. They went into exhibits or were sent to other aquariums and to researchers. That may seem harmful to these fish populations, but Todd and other biologists say the impact is minimal. If you catch a stray tropical fish here in New York, um, that's about as environmentally sound as you can get in the way of obtaining tropical marine fish for your aquarium. You're not removing them from the reproductive population from a coral reef. You're taking fishes that are uh, doomed to, to die when the water temperatures fall in, in October. Any tropical marine fish you buy in a pet shop, for the most part, it got taken from a coral reef somewhere in the tropics. Um, actually, when I first started working up here, I was shocked to find out that you could find tropicals up here. I didn't know they came up this far. So that was pretty interesting to me. I had no idea. I'd say for this time of year it was very successful. These fish will all go uh, directly into a quarantine system at the aquarium. And from there they'll be distributed. Some of them will go into our snorkel tank outside. Some of them may eventually end up in our reef tank. Uh, being able to collect right here, right down the street, um, makes, it makes for a nice story in a lot of our displays, being able to showcase fish that are locally caught, whether they're resident species or the tropical strays.